Afternoon guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School, back with part four in our rope clinic. Do me one favor before we get started today and make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. Make sure that you've got the notification bell hit so that you get notified every time I put up a new video and tell one of your buddies about my channel. Okay guys, let's get started. All right, in today's video, what we're gonna discuss is we're gonna discuss five midline or inline loops and what they're used for and how we employ some of that here at the Pathfinder School at our basic class. Okay, the first midline loop I wanna to talk to you about today is the running knot. And we've discussed this already a little bit when we talked about slip knots. And a running knot is different than a slip knot in that the standing end of the line that you have tied to something, if it's pulled on, a running knot will come out of the line. Whereas a stop knot won't come out. So a running knot is tied so that the loop comes from the standing end, and when it's pulled on, it comes out. Now, that loop, that, that running knot that most people call a slip knot is the basis for most misunderstanding with the trucker's hitch. When you make a trucker's hitch and you use this running knot, you're actually making a rope tackle. You're making a loop that doesn't have a block. You're using that for leverage. So you're creating a rope tackle using a running knot. So the way we make this knot is we turn a loop over and the standing end is pulled through that loop. And when the standing end is pulled, it comes undone. That makes a running knot. So looking at this from a POV fashion, if this is our standing end of the line, the standing end is what we're going to pull through that loop. We're just going to make an overhand loop. And the standing end of that line is what you're going to pull through to create a running knot, just like this. And if you pull on the standing end, it's going to come out. That makes a running knot. So now let's talk about this running knot as a rope tackle. We've got one end of our line attached with some type of hitch. Now we have this end of our line and the standing or running end is attached here. The working end, if we turn this loop in and we pull the running line through that loop, then it becomes a running knot. If we pull on that, it's going to come undone. To use that as a rope tackle, we have to pull on it from a different direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull that same knot in the line, giving us that running knot. But what we're going to do is we're gonna take the working end of the line around and we're going to pull it through. And instead of pulling the knot, we're pulling on that loop. With this, we're pulling on it with the working end. And now it won't collapse on itself and it becomes a rope tackle at that point that we can use to tie that rapid deployment ridge line and half hitch it off. The advantage to that is that once you pull that out of there, all you have to do is pull on this against the standing end and it completely comes out of the line. That's the advantage of that quick running knot when it comes to a rope tackle is it's very easy to get out where others are not so quick. And if you're making a ridge line and you're trying to get up and down quick or emergency shelters and things like that, you want that speed and you want that ease to be able to do that stuff with one hand very, very quickly. That's what you want. You want to be able to do this stuff with one hand if you have to, and you want to be able to do it very, very quickly without even thinking about it. Okay, so now let's talk about a directional figure of eight, which is actually the proper knot to use for a true trucker set. Assuming that this is the standing end and this is the working end of our line, we're going to turn a loop over in the line and we're going to bring that loop behind the standing end and around. And then we're going to put it back through the same loop that the working end is going through, just like this. And we pull that down that will give us a directional figure of eight. Advantages to something like this is that we can now attach something to this that's going to have a lot of weight and force pulled against it, and it's going to not degrade the rope very much because you've used a figure of eight style knot, which holds 70 to 75% of the rope's strength. Okay, let's look at that directional figure of eight from a POV. Okay, let's look at this directional figure of eight from a POV. We're going to put an overhand loop in the line. We're going to come behind the line 
and through the loop on the same side that the working end is on, pulling away from the running end, just like this. That's going to give us a directional figure of eight. Okay, let's talk about the Alpine Butterfly. This is my favorite inline loop to use for block and tackle stuff. So we're just gonna lay the rope across our hand. We're gonna come up to the top and back down and cross these two lines. We're gonna take this line underneath that X and pull a loop through just like this. And when we dress that down, we're gonna have a nice, neat Alpine Butterfly. That is a perfect inline loop to attach block and tackles to. All right, so for the POV, lay the line across your hand, come up over the top just like this, come back down and make an X. Now we're just gonna take this underneath this X and back out, dressing everything down as we go, just like that. And that gives us an alpine butterfly loop. I'm gonna show you guys a little trick here that involves that running knot. And we're also going to use our alpine butterfly in this demonstration as well for a block and tackle. Now, let's say you have a rafter up above you or a tree limb and you've thrown your rope over the top of that like I have here, but you wanna make sure that you can retrieve this when it's done. If you just tie something on here and pull it up tight, you're gonna to have to climb up there to get it out. The way around that is give yourself enough tail on the end of this thing that you can jerk on that tail. And then tie a running knot in that tail, just like this. Then run this through that running knot and pull it up to the top. What's gonna happen here is this running knot will move with the line and you can pull it tight, just like we were pulling on it a minute ago with that rapid deployment ridge line. But when we're done with this, we can then just pull down here and it's all going to come loose for us and we can get it all undone very, very easy. But this gives us a way to get it tight and be able to put pressure on it and still be able to retrieve it very easy when we're done. So now here's another, here's another quick tip. You got this loop we talked about, so you can pull that up and pull it down. Now you can attach tackle to that loop and you can run that loop straight to the top and your tackle will now be at the top and your tail is what's going to allow you to bring that back down when it's over. But your tackle just got hoisted all the way to the top if you're trying to lift something up. So now I can take the other end of this line, bring this down, take the other end of this line and put it through my shackle here. And now, whatever I've got here hanging off of this rope, whether it's another pulley at the bottom attached to something else for a block and tackle to get two to one advantage, I'm always pulling the opposite direction of that running knot. So it's never going to come undone. But at the same time, when I need to get all of this stuff back and retrieve it, all I have to do is pull on this tail and it's all gonna come right back to me again. Now, once I've hoisted this up to the top, if I need to put a loop somewhere down here lower, then it's easy enough just to tie that Alpine butterfly in there that we talked about a minute ago, come underneath and pull it through. And I've got an Alpine butterfly loop in there that I can use to attach that to or a directional figure of eight. But again, an Alpine butterfly attaching tackle to that and putting a lot of force on it is going to come undone easier because of the way it breaks down than a directional figure of eight. Okay, let's talk about a bowling on a bike. So we're going to, again, tie a mid loop here. So we're going to come in and turn over both lines, just like we were gonna tie a bowling knot. And we're going to come up through the loop, just like we were going to tie a bowling knot. Remember that this part is the loop. We're going to take this and we're going to bring it over the top of everything. And then we're going to dress everything down just like this. And that's going to give us a bowl on a bite. It's a really confusing looking knot, in my opinion. It drives me crazy sometimes because it's easy to turn it over and it doesn't act right. 
it becomes a slip knot at that point. You've got to get it exactly right so that it doesn't slip on you. If you let this portion here get out of control up in here, it's going to flip over on you like this, and then it's going to become a slip knot. You see, just like that. So you can't let that part get out of control and flip over on you. So we're going to tie this bowling on a bite. So we're going to turn this over just like a normal bowling, except we're using both lines. We're going to come up through here, just like we would on a normal bowling, understanding that this part here is the knot and this is actually our loop. This portion has to pass over the top of everything. But you have to control this loop and you have to feed things through so that this line traps everything here at the bottom, like this, when you pull it tight. And then you'll have a non-slipping bowling on a bite. Okay, this last inline loop that I wanna show you was one that I came up with kind of by accident. I haven't been able to find it anywhere, but I know I've got some good knot guys that watch my videos. So if you know the name of this knot, let me know. So basically what we're gonna do is we're going to create a running knot with a loop. So we're coming around here and we're creating a running knot with a loop here, just like this. Now we're taking this loop, which is actually the part that's going to pull out, and we're gonna put it back over the top of these two loops and below the knot, and we're gonna cinch that down on top of it, just like this. This is not a bowling. It's something completely different, but it looks very similar. You've got three wraps of rope here and two here, and you've got a double loop. This is a good inline loop because, number one, it's easy to tie. It's fairly easy to break down. And again, because it's based on a running knot, it's very easy to remember. All right, so again, this fifth knot is kind of an original. I can't find any name for it, and I haven't named it yet, but I like using it because it's based on a running knot. So I take a loop of line, and I'm going to create a running knot, just like this. And instead of letting that loop pull through that running knot, I'm gonna run that loop over the top and back down, just like this, and then tighten it up to trap everything. So you got three and two, and it almost looks like a bowl in here. And you got a double loop here. But again, very easy to tie, very easy to remember because it's based again on that running knot. All right, guys, well, I'm Dave Canterbury, Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School, and I appreciate you joining me out here today for part four in our rope clinic. Again, make sure that you're subscribed, make sure you hit that notification bell. I appreciate your views, I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.